Welcome to Wizards Institute, the number one community to learn smart investing and financial independence. Great. We have a very special guest and special day today with my coach, Coach Justin Martinez. Justin, welcome. And welcome. I thank you for uh, bringing me in and, and joining you. I'm looking forward to this. Great. Well, Justin, I'll, I'll let you sort of do the, your, your tremendous intro yourself, but just by way of background, Justin is one of my favorite coaches out of a real estate program that I'm a part of. Uh, he's been guiding me in the past year, year and four months on how to invest properly in real estate multifamily. Just fantastic advice. Uh, obviously, Justin coaches a lot of other folks as well, but I really want, I'm, I'm excited because uh, for the book, The Ten Commandments, we do talk about smart investing, investment strategies across all asset classes, Justin, as you know. But one of my favorite and your favorite is multifamily. So this is sort of a series of bringing in super smart, super successful real estate inv investors and coaches to sort of show shows how to do it correctly. So Justin, uh, maybe I'll kind of hand it over to you and just tell us a bit more about you know your your different platforms. You're a very busy man, but Give us sort of like the uh, 30 second, 30,000 feet overview. Who, who is Justin Martinez? Yeah, thank you, Sam. Yeah, I'll be quick on this. So been doing real estate investing since 2003. Started in single family for about 10 years. Really didn't like the speed of that. So in 2013, I decided to crank it up a little bit and see how I could speed up this, create some economies to scale and uh, joined a group in Dallas-Fort Worth uh, there for multifamily investing. And I when I, when I went to that, it, it was a game changer for me. I knew that's what I wanted to do pretty much the rest of my life. And so I pursued that and gave it everything I have. And so let's fast forward to today. Today, you know, I'm, I'm in now over 4,000 doors and we just closed a, a massive deal in Houston, uh, 1,330 doors. And just I, I'm just blessed to be able to have a team around me uh, that allows me to perform on that level. And, and I get to do it, San, traveling the country with my family and going to these amazing national parks and amazing and just have living life. That's what it's about living life. And that's the reason why I do it. So it's a lot of fun. I enjoy what I do. Yeah. So, so I, I say, I want to talk about it, Justin, because um, I think you, you've got this souped up luxury uh, RV or sprinter. You've been traveling for an entire yep. year with a couple of dogs and your family. Is that, is that what yes, that, I have? And, it, and obviously that's what's enjoying, happening. And uh, I've been doing it for you. Enjoy, enjoy yourself, but also doing deals along the way. Is that, is that how you're? Uh, yeah, working yeah that, you? that's what's happening. Yeah. So, so it, it, we're, we're enjoying life. I, my hours are typically like eight at 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. And after that, I am putting my technology away and I'm, I'm present with my family and we enjoy nature. We enjoy hikes. And we enjoy, you know, culture. We enjoy all of that. And all at the same time, San, I, I have the opportunity. Uh, I've had the opportunity to build a team around me of well-skilled individuals that allow my family business operate at a very high level. And so I continue to grow and I want to continue to grow. As we travel, eventually the world, I want to be able to go to, you know, Ecuador and Thailand and things like that. In order for me to get there, I knew, I knew, I know I need to be a CEO of my business and be able to operate at a very high level. And in order to do that, do that I need talented individuals. So I'm, I'm blessed to have really well-skilled people that work with me. Uh, and we're continuing to grow because the, the faster we grow, the bigger we grow, the, the more I'm able to support them and their growth and their adventures. And that's what, that's what the pursuit is. So I, I'm, I'm, living, I'm living the dream right now for sure. That's amazing. How young is your kid? Six years old. Yeah. Lila, oh, wow. Eight, eight, that's eight, eight, that's eight, best that, education, okay. best education on the road for sure. Okay. So 10 years of living the great life while acquiring 400 doors on average per, per year. Now you're 4,000 doors. Uh, that, that is truly amazing. I mean, that's a goal that I certainly like to go to, uh, um, following that footsteps, uh, Justin. So maybe sort of step back a little bit, right? So what were you doing prior to doing initially a single family? And then how did you sort of come to that? And just a bit more, and, and more on just like how you got there is more of like the strategy and business consideration, how you sort of decided to, and sort of the economic reasons why you decided to invest your time and money into that space. 
did they successfully? Sure. So yeah. It, yeah. It, um, it all started with uh, uh, out of school, uh, college. I was I remember being at my uh, mom's house reading a book on the couch, rich dad, poor dad. And all, you know, my mindset uh, going into it, everybody starts there, right? Because uh, throughout life, you're conditioned. There's conditioning taking place your whole life, uh, good or bad. And so, you know, during this process, you know, conditioned in that perspective from an economic perspective is to go out, go to school, get good grades, go to college, get a job, start a family, and that's it. That's, that's the American dream, right? Well, for me, that didn't resonate with me that much. I didn't, I, I it didn't. It, it didn't feel right here. I was like, that's, that doesn't seem right. So I read that book and I enriched that poor dad. It absolutely changed my mindset to become a business owner uh, and become an investor. And as soon as I said that, I said, this is what I want to do. I want to do real estate and I pursued it. And so at that time, being 22 years old, you know, of course, you know, at, at definitely a different mindset than I think now, right? The, the limiting beliefs were, were a lot there, a lot more in place then than now. Like my limiting beliefs now, I feel like I'm sh shredding them every single day on things that are holding me back. But back then, I said, you know what? Let's get into single family. Let's see how this goes. So I did single family in 2003, and I started that process. Started that process, and it was slow, San. I did, my growth was I, – I didn't have much growth for 10 years. Didn't have much growth at all. It was one single family, owner finance, rent to own – uh, fix and flip. And I did it. I was, you know, successful, but it wasn't at the speed and pace that I, I wanted to go. And the, and, and your question was, you know, what pursued me to this? Uh, first, being my own boss and being an entrepreneur, but, but more importantly, freedom. Freedom to be able to do the things I love, right? To be able to travel, mm. to be able to spend time with my family. And that's what continues what pushes me today. And so in 2013, when I decided, you know, the single family business, is of course uh, uh, not uh, not what I expected. It's not getting me where I go. I had to find another answer. And what I found is through multifamily investing, uh, it allows you uh, the opportunity to grow a business without being in the weeds and working 40, 60 hours a week. Of course, we put in time and effort and energy into this business, but but pound for pound, uh, pound for pound, it allows you uh, to scale a lot quicker and be able to build a team a lot quicker. And I love that. And so that's where I am today. And, and um, multifamily real estate in general has allowed me to you know, live the lifestyle I want because that's what it's about, mm. right? I don't want to be working 60 hours a week and, and, and building my all, all this, but not living life, not being in the moment of life and enjoying it and being present the here and now and connecting with people and nature and, and just communities. And that's, that's where I'm at now. And, and every single day I do that, uh, things get better. And that, so it, that, that, that has been the journey and it's been great. So, uh, Justin, you, you painted this beautiful, true picture of, of this dream life that you're living, uh, sort of this financial freedom and, and being your own boss, uh, via real estate multifamily. Um, can you share with us? So really you're living the dream, you have the outcome, but when you first started, or before you started, as you evaluated different options, because you're a smart guy, you've got a lot of options. You could have gone into technology, you could have gone into something else, corporate, which could achieve the same goal, right? What sure. was it, Justin, about real estate in general and multifamily? What attributes about this asset class or about your investment strategy specifically got you into this space? Yeah, great question. Um, mm -hmm. You know, for... My, my initial selfish reasons were uh, being able to be a CEO immediately and, and manage the people that operate property. So you know, as, 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 asset, as general partners in multifamily, you're, you're uh, asset managers. And so we're managing a management company. Uh, and so the management company, of course, is doing the day-to-day -day grind, right? Dealing with tenants, uh, dealing with maintenance and things like that. And then, of course, it's our job to manage them. And so managing the management company, if you do it correctly, it does not require you to be in the weeds with it 24-7. And so that right there showed that I uh, allowed for time, you know, my time, it was very valuable. And, and when I saw that, I felt that real estate in general, uh, that multifamily would allow me for that, for time, managing the management company and being able to scale. But as I grew into this business of multifamily, what I realized is, is what we're doing is providing communities. These people have, mem these tenants have memories here. This is where they raise their children. 
This is where they're going to remember playing on the playground. This is where they're going to remember meeting their first friends and for mm -hmm. us to be a part of that, where we could influence it and we could create this community, bring it up, right? Our, 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 our model in this business is value add, right? How do we bring value? Well, we upgrade the units. How do we bring value? By taking care of exterior, adding some amenities. But what, a, what, become a, what came of that is a better community. And so here we are, these tenants that are in these properties, yes, their rent might be going up a little bit, but at the same time, we're taking care of them. They're also team members and com the, the community is a part of us. The more we can contribute to them in a meaningful way and the more we can show them that we care about them, the more, the more successful we can be. So to be able to go in and, tra and transform communities, that's when it started to hit home for me that, wow, I love what I do. This is something that not only helps me with, you know, create income, create wealth, and still have my time, but it's also allowing us to change communities for the better and bring, giving people safer, cleaner places to live and allowing them to, you know, live their life in, in a way that um, they create those memories. And it's just cool to be a part of that. Wow. It, it, it sounds like utopia. You've got financial freedom, be your own boss. Uh, you're making very nice income. Uh, and, and you're also helping the, the community, right? It's like the total package. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Uh, um, so let me ask you this. Um, uh, the book that you see behind my background, uh, you mentioned Rich Dad Poor Dad. Uh, you know, I you're you're a young man compared to me. I've got three kids now in high school, but when there were <laughs> just a few years older than your child, from age eight to ten, eight to eleven, I force fed them two books. One is uh, Kiyosaki, and I force fed them Four Hour Work Week because just like you, you know, being an Asian, you know, Asian parents are like, go to Ivy League, get a job and just be happy, right? Uh, and I think mm -hmm. a lot of parents are like that. Um, I, and I chose that path for a little bit, but for my kids, I wanted them to, to, to have a choice, which is exactly you described it, right? So, for, uh, you, know, you know, surprisingly, the, the Rich Dad Poor Dad and Poor Award, it does have resonance, even though they hated the book initially. They, they, uh, so my 18 year old has kind of adapted the attitude. She doesn't want to work. She wants, she's got side hustles. And so we wrote this book, Commandments of, uh, 10 Commandments of Investing. Sort of like we, we were hoping that this would be sort of a third book that kids would read or young people would read because uh, uh, Ferris teaches you that, you know, you don't have to do nine to five. You can work smart, right, with the, with the sports superstar team and work the hours that you talked about, maybe more, maybe less, but certainly not full time and certainly not necessarily sitting in an office. You could be in RV, you could be in Bali, right? So Ferris really had impact on right. my kids. And obviously, Kiyosaki taught all the stuff that everyone talks about, which is, you know, there's a, a, a certain path of financial freedom, passive income. Uh, this book, we really wanted to teach sort of like, you no, know, if you decided in that path, what is really say something else, what are the smart things you should do to invest your capital and your time and your people so that you can achieve this lifestyle, this financial freedom quicker, right? So sorry, that was a long introduction, but and so we came up with these 10 commandments by studying some of the really most successful investors in the world in history. So for Justin Martinez, you are an investment wizard. You've chosen multifamily, right? Are there certain commandments or principles, whether it's a life principle or an investment principle that you follow by that you can give my audience such advice? That was a long question. Yeah, that's makes that, sense. No, no, no. That, you know, and I love these 10 commandments. This is great. And, 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 and actually, you know, the first one, uh, you know, know and be true to thyself. I, when I saw that, I love that being number one because that's where it begins. You know, understanding yourself and self-awareness of what moves you, what makes you, uh, what what goals and outcomes do you want in this life? You know, uh, investing in real estate and in, investing in a business is a vehicle to to allow us the freedom and the things that we want to do and what we love. And so, uh, being true to yourself and understanding. You know, what is it asking that question? You know, asking great questions is always a great thing to do. If you ask great questions, you'll discover great answers, okay? And so before investing in vehicles, and because and, there's a huge lot of opportunities out there, but understanding what is the end goal? What is the mission? What is the purpose mm, that I mm. want to do and, and why I want to invest? So critical to first establish that. 
once you're clear on that, then it allows you to identify those vehicles that make sense, that are in line with what you want to do. So for me, you know, being able, uh, like I mentioned, to travel the world and connect with nature, connect with my family, yep. Uh, yep. and, and yep. just explore more of who I am is important. And so the vehicle for me, multifamily investing, now, if you looked at the fundamentals of, of multifamily investing, for me, it had all those that allowed me to do that. But then it, with the cherry on top was, like I mentioned, being able to invest in, in being valued to communities. And so then that aligns with my core values. Okay, so being able to understand that first will understand, okay, what vehicle should I go down? Am I, am I a multifamily guy? Am, you know, am I a mobile home guy? Am I starting my own business guy? Whatever that may be, does it align with my, work, my mission and will it help it support my mission, my purpose? And then does it align with my core values of who I am, of like this deep down, I, it, I truly enjoy and appreciate investing in, in, in this type of asset or this type of business. And that guidance will, will allow you for the more, it's all about clarity. The more clarity you have, the more easier decisions decide, start to yeah. come in. And so that for me, that's, that's the guiding force for me. To deciding and so once you're in that 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 zone that arena it a lot it, life's a lot easier i'm not saying there's not challenges i've been challenged my whole life of different you know my first by the way Sam, my first deal in multifamily was a total flop we still own it today and we've only sent like two distributions so i i, I by no means has this been an absolute you know skyrocket uphill but i learned from that and i grew from that and i allowed i didn't let it define me i i, I just mm. i let it i let it teach me i let it i let it uh take me and say, hey, how can I be better asset manager? How can I make better decisions in, in, in deciding on property? So uh, I got off track a little bit there, but right there that at the core, that, that's how I, think, I feel you know, we should approach this and uh, investing in multifamily or anything that, that makes sense for that individual. Like you said, a lot of vehicles, but you have to look at it in, in a sense that what makes sense for that individual to go. And for me, it was multifamily. That's great, great, great. So, uh, Justin, uh, commandment number nine, uh, I know you have the list there. I appreciate you looking at that as well. Is also the most obvious. And if you look at it, you're like, oh, yeah, who, that, you know, that's just silly. Right? Everybody knows <laughs> that. But, but commandment number nine, don't lose money. Actually, if you one. think about and you study investment wizards, whether they do blockchain or, or, or technology or, or stocks, whatever. You know, the, the truly great investors hedge their bets and they don't lose money, right? And yep. multifamily to me, and before, I, I don't want to dive, I, I don't want to hear your views, is how is Commandment 9 and multifamily related? And, and why is it so special? Can you talk about that? Just, I want to be sure yeah, the audience a, hears your view the, about it, right? Sure. Especially, yeah, in this type of, especially in this type of economy, Justin, right? Right, right. No, that's a big one, Sam. That, that is probably a good, that's obviously a very good principle. And so, you know, going into multifamily, you know, of course, I talked about, you know, uh, the, being in a business that I'm changing communities. But if you're, if, you, if you're investing in something risky and you could lose money, obviously, that, that is not a good plan. And so with multifamily, you know, the question then is, remember, back to great questions, how can I not, how can I make sure I don't lose money? Right. How, what are the, the principles that need to be in place to make sure you don't lose money? Well, of course, the multifamily real estate in general, the industry mm -hmm. and, and what we invest in, which we invest in BNC class properties, uh, there is the, the if you do it right, very difficult chance to lose money. And the reason is this is the supply and demand. OK, as you know, there's the, the amount of affordable housing out there compared to uh, the demand, demand is off the charge compared to the supply. And, and it's a big challenge to build affordable housing. So as demand continues to increase and the supply continues uh, to, you know, not necessarily just be stable, but it's never gonna get to the place of, of being up here. And as, and as single houses, it's making it very challenging for people to buy their, you know, their, their own house because that's the American dream. Well, as we transition out of COVID, it, it uh, is unfortunately becoming more difficult for people at home. It's going to bring more and more people into the market of multifamily to rent, which will increase demand. And of course, the cost of building anything is continuing to skyrocket, as you know. 
it costs the yes. lumber is going yeah. up through the roof. And so there's that, there's straight up e economics 101, high demand, low, low supply. It's going to lead to an increase number of increased occupancies and increase uh, rental growth. And so that right there, that arena, that kind of business is going to be very solid. So it's, it's becoming, the question was, hey, how do we not lose money? Well, let's invest something that is uh, not necessarily risk-free, but it's definitely not risky. So with multifamily investing, you can see that. And then I look at a few other things. Oh, Dustin, you're on the, uh, mute. Okay. I got it. So yeah, so you have to look at a few other things um, that make sure that these are the principles, even to being a passive investor, right? You, you, you have to be educated. Education is the critical piece. So whatever arena you decide to go down, it's multifamily investing, it's single family, if it's, if it's mobile home parks, regardless, getting educated in that, in that arena will obviously minimize risk, minimize losing money. Right. And so that's that's mm -hmm. obviously a critical component. Uh, and then as I as I get into this, if you get deeper and say, OK, this is the vehicle, you know, having the right team around you. I mentioned at the beginning, you know, in order to scale, in order for me to travel the country, I have to have some diamonds in the rough. I have to have some talent on my team. I have to have a team that's aligned with my core values. So your team is obviously important. Uh, the sub market and the market and making sure that that job growth, population growth is there. And then, and, and, and then the last piece for us is value add, making sure that there's mm. really good value on there to, in order for us to increase rent, in order for us to increase income. And then, of course, the underwriting and back to education, full circle. If you have education, you can understand underwriting. If all of these are in place, um, and of course, in an industry that is going to be uh, a lot of demand, a little supply, you got a really good formula, Sand, where you are uh, minimizing your risk and hopefully not losing any money. Gotcha, gotcha. That's great. That's great. Um, so, Justin, for you and your family, are you 100% in multifamily in terms of time? And what is your allocation in terms, and you don't have to tell me the numbers, more of a percentage, in terms of sure. where you're parking sure. your, your savings and your family savings retirement? Like, how, how, how concentrated are you in the multifamily asset class vis-a-vis -vis other, other assets? 80, so I'm 80% in multifamily. I'm and I'm probably 15% uh, in uh, more stocks and bonds, and then 5% for play. So I like invest in, uh, like for instance, plays in, in uh, New York City. I just invested in a, in one that's coming up, and that was fun. With and and obviously that's through another partner. But uh, my obviously, as you can see, San huge concentration in multifamily, and you're like, wow, that seems pretty risky. To be concentrated, but for me, I'm going to put park my money where I can. I control. I understand it. I have more control, and I have more influence on the whole situation. And so that's sure, where I feel more sure. comfortable. Maybe there's a bubble down the no. line, but but at the pace that I'm going of building my wealth, uh, it, it seems to be. It seems to make sense for me. So those percentages, Justin, are the the percentage of capital, right? What about time? Time spent. Uh, Time spent, yes. So time spent, hundred percent in multifamily. That's it. That's all I do. And so, um, okay. and and here's a, and here's something to think about for um, for for your listeners and the, and the ones that are watching is, you know, in any business, you, you got to learn to become a CEO of the business. You got to work on the business and not in the business. And so for me, working on the business isn't the most important, and, and becoming a CEO. And so what do CEOs do? There's three things that they need to focus on. The vision, okay, for the for the company, and vision for their employees. Two, hiring talent, and then three, coaching. So, I, as you know, Dan, I'm multifamily coach. I've been doing that for a while, so it's in my blood of wanting to help others. But not only am I coaching people and how to do multifamily, I'm also coaching my team how to think differently. That's the biggest thing. How can I think differently? How can I approach this situation differently? How can I approach my scheduling differently? How can I approach this situation differently? So being a CEO, it's always about leading your team on how to think mm. differently and how to share vision and then how to find that talent to make it happen to create for me to create a world-class multifamily business. Fantastic. So, so uh, I see this coaching and the mindset leadership, Justin, I want to come back to sort of like 
as the punchline, one of the most important things that I, one of the areas that I'm really impressed about, uh, I want to come back to that. In terms of the allocation, so 80% multifamily in terms of capital, 15 stocks and bonds, 5% for play, but you're basically virtually 100% of your work time on doing multifamily deals. So the the 20% really you're outsourcing and spending very little time on in terms of that, that amount of capital, correct? So stocks, you you probably use some kind of wealth manager, they would do the work for you. Yeah. And you're exactly. just focused on you just focus on this one asset class, one strategy. Is that correct? That's correct. Yes. And so, okay. and so um, Great. And, and let me just add something. Let me just, and, and if you have a question, fine, but I'd love to add to this. Um, and, and anything, in any business that, uh, you know, your listeners are getting into, it's, it's important that they, that, especially at the beginning, that they narrow their focus on one mm. thing and get really good at it. How do, how do you create mastery in the, in the business, right? And for me, it didn't make sense for me to get in, in venture and, and do other things. Uh, because for me, there was no mastery for me. It was dabbling. Let me try this. Let me try that. For me, multifamily is my thing. I want to create mastery. Now, some might say, well, you know, I want to, I want to dabble in offices and new construction and multifamily. And that's fine. That's fine. But let's, let's make sure to strategize where you're also partnering with somebody that is mastery in that field. That's all they do in that field. So, where regardless of how you approach it, are you going to be the master in that? Or, you, or if you're not, are you going to partner with a master to make sure that that's taken care of, that you're going to be uh, uh, at that best and peak performance for that, those properties and the returns that, 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 that you are in good hands? Because if you dabble in so many things and you're, not, and you're the one that's considered a master, that, that could be challenging. So that's how I approach it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, no. Uh, just I, I'm taking pause a little because um, you know you're a young man. Uh, again, relatively, you're you're super successful, uh, especially compared to some of the 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 sort of older. You know, we've interviewed some billionaires uh, um, on, on our podcast that contribute to the book. But as I listen to you, the semantics might be different in how you communicate your principles but you know there's a lot of a lot of similarities right you know you mentioned knowing be true to yourself you know early on what you want to do or you don't want to do right you definitely per commandment to you own your space you know multifamily and i know this before this call because you've coached me in multifamily and you, you know you, you definitely follow the market and you have you know commandment five you have religion you have conviction in this space and it's just you can feel it now through the zoom you can feel it even though the connection is not that great i can feel the energy and the religion right and so and you know the interesting thing is the, the most controversial commandment is diversify don't over diversify because uh a lot of the, the investment wizards this is one commandment that kind of differs a, a, a number of super successful research says you listen get to 20 different 20 30 different diversifications but a lot of multifamily people, sure. yourself included, are very concentrated multifamily. I'm not 80%, I'm 70%. Yes. But that's very concentrated, right? Uh, and, you know, that's it a little is. unusual because, because you talk to your fund manager, let's say they're like, you know, get to 10, 20 stocks. Don't go to 1,000 stocks, right? But I, I feel like there's so much conviction, so much religion in this space, as you and I have, that we are... The folks that do multifamily tend to be very concentrated. And, you know, for the audience listening, that says something, right? I, I, I'm not that smart. Justin definitely is smart. There's a reason why he's 80% multifamily, right? So uh, now, sorry. So, so with that, I, I want to come to the most important commandment, which is uh, mind the mind or mind your mind. Because, you know, you can read a thousand books. You can read our book. You can read Kiyosaki. And I think most the average person with the average intelligence will get the point, right? Looking at the Ten Commandments, listening to Tim Ferriss of Kiyosaki, uh, reading Ray Dalio, you kind of get the book. It's not that complicated, the principles, right? What is What truly sets an investment wizard apart from somebody else that's not is really the mind, right? So, so Justin, talk to us more on how you structure your day, how you discipline yourself, how you stay so focused, uh, so what are the mm -hmm. tricks, tricks there that you follow? I think to, to us, that's really valuable. If you could sort of show. 
Yeah. Well, it, it, man, this is the core. This is this is what you're what you're talking about. The mindset that is the foundation. And it's really cliche, right? We hear it a lot, especially the people that listen to podcasts. Oh, you know, you have to have good mindset, but it is absolutely true. And so for me, being a high performance coach uh, and being gone through high performance coaching myself for the past year, it's important that we're, we're positioning ourselves every single day to be our best, right? How can I show up on this call with Sam and show up with energy, show up with confidence and be able to just be me and be my true authentic self. And so for me, it's a morning ritual for me is critical. It's called priming, right? How can I prepare myself? It's my personal time in the morning of drinking my, my energy drink that allows me, you know, that has the vitamins and the minerals to allow me to be at my peak state, to, to my workouts, to my meditation, to my reading. While people are sleeping, I'm priming myself to get ready and to be at my peak state. But most importantly, th this is a big one setting your intention for the day and setting your intention for how you're going to show up in a meeting, uh, setting your intention for how you're going to be with your family, setting your intention. And what I mean by that is most of the time, people go about their day on autopilot. They, they let the day own them and not own the day. Okay. And so what happens is they get in a situation and they're reactionary and something happens and immediately they show up in a certain way because they, they, there is no intention there. What I mean by intention for like, for instance, on this call, you know, before I got on this call, well, how do I want to show up with Sam? Well, I want to show up, like I said, confident, energetic, joyful, right? How, and then at, by eight o'clock after my priming in the morning, eight o'clock, I start my day, I am ready to go. And I've set my intention on how I'm going to show up today. I might have status calls with my properties. How do I want to show up on those status calls? How do I want to be there and, and be a leader? Well, I want to be a I want to be a role model. I want to, I want to challenge them. I, you know, I want to show up a certain way, be a leader. And so for me, priming the day, priming yourself in the morning and getting prepared in you time and no distractions, no TV, no, no phone, no, even no family, nothing. It's just between you and yourself and getting yourself ready. And then looking at your day and saying, okay, here's what I have. This is how I'm going to show up in each situation. Mm -hmm. And then, then the transactions happen, right? Or the transactions transition, excuse me, happen from say, for instance, at two o'clock, I stop. Well, I've been on this whole time. So I, I have another call after this, but at, when I stop work at two, it's time for me to, to release and, 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 and give a 10 minute meditation and just let my mind rest for a minute before I go into my next part of my day, because I'm about to enter my day with my family. And if I carry on what I've been doing, I'm not going to be present with them. And so for me to stop, quiet the mind, slow down, take deep breaths and just have an afternoon meditation. And then, okay, great. Set that intention for, I want to show up with my daughter, my wife. Hey, I want to be present with her. I want, I want to be in the moment with her. I, I want to, I want to uh, be joyful and connected. And so that for me is something that's very important. And so for me, the, the my biggest leaps for me and my biggest transformation that's taken place has gone through that process in creating mm -hmm. a habit every day allows me to get in those states where I'm at my peak and, uh, and it allows me to just live life. So that, that's what I like to share. And that's what's gotten me to, I feel that I'm blessed to be, uh, you know, in a position I'm at right now. Fantastic. No, that's, that's, uh, those are great golden nuggets, uh, Justin. Now this, this morning ritual and this delineation between work and family, that's fantastic. Is this something they do every day or weekdays only? And how long have you been following this process? So I've been doing it, uh, I, I was kind of half in it uh, for the last couple of years, but I had a full commitment over the last year uh, and I'm, I'm human, right? And so, uh, of course, like all of us. And so there's times that it doesn't necessarily show up the way I want, but I have a commitment to it. And so I've been doing it for a year. And, uh, and once you create a habit, then it just becomes consistent and then that you do it. Uh, mm -hmm. But let me add one more nugget for you. You like this one. So sometimes... At high performers like yourself and, and the ones listening, uh, we are all about achievements. We're all about lists. We're all about growth. We're all about next, 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 right? And which is great. But sometimes you got to take a step back and give yourself grace and smell the roses as well. We, we can't be full out all the time. We have to take a step back 
and and actually acknowledge our wins and acknowledge you know where we're where we were and where we're at and self-reflection and understanding gives yourself a little bit of a chance to say you know what i'm i i am doing a good job i'm i'm going in the right direction i'm i'm living my dream and it, let, it allows you just to take a breath and smell stop and smell the roses and what that does is allow you to appreciate where you're at and get and be grateful but then it allows you to recharge the battery and be ready for the next week ready to take on the next challenge. And so uh, for me, I never did that, Sam. It was challenging for me. I never like really, I was always like, oh, got to get my next deal. I, oh, I got, you know what? I got, I got to do this. I got to do this. And never really enjoying the moment of life mm. and, and recognizing progress that I've had. And so for me to, to start doing that and allowing myself to do that has been a great gift for me. So I encourage your listeners to take the time to, reflect and, and give themselves grace and say, you know what, you know, we're, I, I'm going in the right direction. Everything's going to be fine. And, and just allowing that time for space. And then there's always time to get right back into it on Monday morning. Yeah, no, Justin, actually, um, that's an important point. We've heard more than once, and, and this applies especially to young men, young successful alpha males that are aggressive, the super ambitious, obviously such as yourself, that just charge, 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 charge. And, and obviously uh, that's a big reason for his success, um, but sometimes you make mistakes or you overwork yourself. And so I think your point is well taken that, you know, maybe it's, it's good instead of going a thousand times, a thousand percent, you know, 24 seven, it might, it might be useful more productive net net over war to slow down a little bit and reflect right i think that that point is really really good really good point yeah Absolutely. um yep i've okay. got i know you've got another meeting coming up just now. i've got two two more questions for you first is uh if you had just two minutes with your kid or let's say with my 18 year old daughter and you were to give her mm -hmm. just one piece of advice for business and for life and then one so one to do and what not to do what would you say to her if you had just, yeah, you know, one um, thing to great. I, I, I think uh, uh, just recognize that conditioning as take, takes place your whole life from the time, you know, you're born to the time you're 18 years old, for instance, conditioning by all sorts, our family, you know, uh, society, TV, and sometimes that conditioning of, of how we should show up very similar to remember what I mentioned, get a house, get, get, you know, get a good job. Sometimes that's not in the best interest. And so just recognize that, hey, that right there might not be in my best interest. So, you know, if there's something that I would encourage them to do is you always got to tap in to, you know, yourself and, and see, you know, what am I passionate about? What moves me? What gets me going? And, and when you tap into that, don't be afraid to what that unveils, right? So for me, being an entrepreneur, I love, you know, the excitement. I'm go, go, go. And I love multifamily. But for others, Including my daughter, right? I'd love to get her involved in, in the real estate business and, and investing, but her true passion might be different. And, and, and I got to acknowledge that and accept that and say, hey, this, we're on this planet such a short time. Follow that, follow, follow that deep heart compassion. And because, because that's what's going to move you, that's what's going to push you, that's what's going to allow you to get to the next level of your life. And so for me, you know, it, it might upset me a little bit if my daughter's like when she gets older. You know, dad, you know, real estate is not it for me. You know, I, I want to do this. Like, I'm like, oh my God, I would love for her to, you know, take over my, my business and my portfolio. Maybe that's the case, but I got to also recognize that it's okay. This is her life, not mine. And that what she's truly passionate about, passionate about as long as she's approaching it in a way that she's giving full commitment and full energy and full passion, all that matters. So if I was going to say something, it sounds cliche as well. Follow with the with the heart saying and follow it that way with pure conviction and confidence and whatever and all the other things that everybody else says is just noise. So that that's what I would share. Fantastic, fantastic, Justin. Uh, you, you're my coach and you're a fantastic coach as part of this program that we're involved in. But you're also a high performance coach mm -hmm. in, in in other areas. Maybe tell us a bit more about that. What that means to be a high performance coach? Who are you coaching? How can our audience sure. potentially find you as a coach if that's possible? And then how, did, how they can reach you? Yeah, great question. So I, I've been uh, privileged enough to be 
coach to have a high performance coach of my own for the last year. And it's, and it's been, like you've seen, it's been transformational for me. And so the, the, there's several areas of high performance that we focus on, you know, clarity, energy, courage, pro productivity, influence, all of these areas are, people want to get better at in, in all areas of life, right? From their businesses to their family, to their uh, just uh, individual communication with people. And, and so in order to, and for me, having that transformation take place over the last year has got to me where I, where I am today of being more true and authentic to myself and being able to show up that way and not, and be unapologetic, right? Like I got to be honest with you, Sam, seven months ago, I might've been a little hesitant to tell somebody I'm traveling the country in a van and, mm -hmm. and doing what I love. Cause I'm, I was thinking maybe, oh, well, maybe they don't, maybe, maybe they don't think I'm on top of my game and all that. But as I, discovered this through this transformation it's like that's who i am and that's what actually brings more value to for me is is to show that hey i'm operating my multifamily business at a very high level and so for for this 12 week program that i was a part of that went through a lot of areas including the ones i mentioned it takes a deeper dive into that right more clarity i talked we talked about clarity how can we get more clear on the way we show up in life? How can we get more clear on the goals and objectives we want for multifamily, you know, to courage? You know, let's, let's dive into courage and see what that looks like. How can we be more courageous? Who is that one person that you need to talk to that you've been putting off to move your business to the next level, right? Uh, to uh, uh, productivity. You know, nobody taught me, Stan, about productivity. And, and productivity doesn't just mean productivity in business. Productivity means also productivity with your family, with yourself, and that's productive, right? Or resting, resting and just uh, being with nature, that's productive, but, but nobody taught me that. But how to be productive in all areas and how to approach your day and your week in a way that allows for maximum productivity. And so for me, those areas, when you start to dive into them and start thinking, remember, thinking differently about those areas, and asking those great questions allows you to have those aha moments and those breakthroughs to get to the next level of what it's all about, how you can become your future highest best self. Because that's all we're trying to do is that, mm. right? How can I be a father? How can I be a better husband? How can I be a better investor? How can I be a better CEO? And asking those great questions and having a coach to guide you is critically uh, so important and for me transformational and and i'm on my journey as you know i've been a coach multifamily coach i'm transitioning to teach people how to coach high performance in all areas of their life and i'm looking forward to building uh you know my uh business and being a high performance coach and bringing on people in group coaching high performance group coaching as well as one-on-one -on -one high performance coaching and so right now my website's getting set up in that arena Anybody gets me, I normally email of my, my business email that should be just like at property.net service. So I'm, I'm here to help. And if any of your listeners or anybody uh, that is interested uh, in learning more about that, they can feel free to reach out to me. I'd love talking. I'd love to share my help on that. Great, great. Hey, Justin, um, can you hear me okay? Yeah, let me just. Uh, oh, yeah. We, we, we tackle a lot today. Let me try to summarize. Uh, I'm going to miss some good, good nuggets, but, um, you know, Justin Martinez, you really, uh, 2003 single family, 2013 multifamily, you're not, you, you basically bought an average 400 doors a year to 4,000 plus doors. I don't know if you know, I'm, I'm lucky to have invested in your last deal in the 1300 door deal. So, so that's a fantastic, so I know the quality of your good. deals. Um, so thank you for that, but that's just amazing. Uh, you know, you can only imagine the type of passive cash flows is coming out of that. So you're living a dream. You're doing this really in your own schedule. You control this, uh, schedule, uh, spending quality time with your family on the road. Um, you know, like, like really virtually every single one of the investment wizards that we've interviewed, Justin, you basically follow these set of principles, again, that we call commandments. You follow most of them or you define most of them, um, you know, from, from really 
conviction and focusing on certain asset class, you know, focusing on don't losing money. These are the things that are really the ingredients to truly, to, to great, to be a great investor. And so I, I kind of saw that today. And uh, I think you also are a great example of sort of the mindset, the leadership that you, you're so passionate about. And it's fantastic that you're also sharing that as a coach. So, so thank you. I think this is a fantastic learning and uh, hopefully my audience will do the same. Appreciate your, your time, Justin. Dan, thank you so much. I'm, I'm here to, to help you in any way possible. I love, I've enjoyed coaching you and I, and I hopefully you and I can do some in the future. Thank you so much. We will, we will. All right, thank you. Thank you for joining us. Please visit Wizards Institute to access the blog summary of today's session, to learn more about other speakers and to network with other investment wizards.